What's up guys? I'm back. We've been gone for a while. A ton has happened. Good and bad. But let's go do morning feed because that's the best time to catch you up on everything that's going on because we literally have to go to all the animals. And I'll also update you on a few other things. Uh, this is just going to be sort of a quick overview of where things are at right now to catch everybody up to speed. And then in future videos, we're going to kind of deal with each thing individually, a little more detailed. But for right now, let's go. We always start out with the pigs because they get super loud and super cranky until they get fed. So let's go check them out first. Good morning, Mater. Big Mama, calm down. You're gonna tear my fence up. So as many of you all know, one of the main reasons why we've been behind on putting out any videos was we had probably the most catastrophic, stressful situation on our homestead where Big Mama's structure burnt to the ground. It was a sight like no other. And in that part I, I mentioned in a Facebook and Instagram post about that, I said that she got burnt on her backside a little bit. And it's healing pretty good, but you can see where her fur is missing right there. A lot of this straw and stuff has gotten kind of stuck to it because uh, the skin right there was fairly raw when it all actually occurred and it came down to here and I, I hit it with some antibiotics and sprayed it with some blue coat. So it kind of made it a little bit sticky. So the straw seems to stick to that area. But on a good note, it looks like the skin has healed up well. And it even looks like maybe some of her fur is starting to come back. So Big Mama's doing well. If anything, she's just eating me at a house and home because I'm pretty much having to triple her feed intake to keep up with her milk production right there. But she's doing well, but I'm sure what y'all really want to know about is how are the piglets doing. So let's go in there and check them out real quick. So I'll go a little more in depth here in a little bit, but this is the temporary shelter that we've used for the piglets and for Big Mama. Uh, this was, if you all have been with us for a long time, this was a building that used to be kept kind of down there in between those trees. And it was essentially sort of a hay shed. Uh, fortunately, our hay was pretty low. The only bale of hay that I had left was kind of trash and I wouldn't feed it to the animals. It's kind of just been there decaying. So we pulled it up with the stakes because it's lightweight and and the fly, we brought it up because it was terrible weather the day of the fire and we needed to get them under shelter right away. So this was something readily available that was lightweight and would provide both dry and wind block of a shelter for them and so we brought it up here pinned it back down and it's it's worked out just fine it's not going to be our permanent thing but for what we had in the situation it, it's okay for now but here's them little bacon bits they're sleeping they're about as cute as a button good morning little piggies how are you all this is the girl and then these three are boys and they are getting big super fast they love their little rubs this one's all buried in there you good buddy you warm you feel warm but they're growing great they're doing good mama's been a good mama 
they usually sleep in pretty good in the mornings and then about nine o'clock or so they pretty much stay out in the open with mama and temperatures have been warm again so that's been really good but no these guys are doing fantastic you say hi little piggies y'all wanna wake up i see a little tail wagon nah too tired we just ended up putting a whole lot of straw in here because the only downfall to this shelter is that it doesn't go all the way to the ground. So we wanted to mostly block the wind. And when it was really cold, we actually just left bales intact and lined the back wall. And that worked out really well. This heat lamp is here, but I haven't used it since I put them in here. And even then, we utilized chains and all kinds of stuff to do it. What we actually ended up doing to keep these guys warm was we used a heat mat i went out to our rural king it's about an hour away and they had an agricultural style heat mat and there were a couple nights when it got really cold and we ended up using those instead and i actually had it set up right there but now temperatures have increased these guys haven't needed any supplemental heat and they're at the age now where they're good and there they go they're venturing out to go see mama You guys gonna catch up? Y'all go see mama too? Oh, it got itchy. Hi, little booger. You got a little booty itch? They're still a little skittish, but they're a lot more open to coming up to me now as they've gotten a little bit older. And I've learned it actually works out best if I just sit down in the straw or sit down like Indian style, and they'll actually come up to you then if you just stay still. And then eventually you can rub on them the whole time, no problems. But they're doing great, mama's doing great. So let's go over here and let's show you where the fire was and kind of where everything finished with that. This is all that's left of the former pig shelter. It pretty much burnt down to literally nothing. Um, it, the only boards that really were sort of still intact were the bottom frame boards and a couple of the four by fours. Other than that, 90% of it burnt up. The tin got so hot, it like warped it. And even some of it's like stuck together for some reason. Um, so it's a little bit hard to get it apart. And then all of this in the bags is really the amount of ash crumble type mixture there was. And we tried to bag up as much of it as we could because really it's just riddled with screws and nails. And we didn't want the pigs getting into all that. Now, the house used to sit right there. This gray building was next to it in between it and the fence line and the fire was getting so hot, it was starting to spread to that building. And so we had to get it pulled away really quick. So let me go in here and show you kind of what all damage it did to the inside and what all we had to do in the moment when it all took off. So like I said, right here is where the structure sat and the fire took off in the building to where it burnt up this post and it's burnt up this post, it went up this tree that's behind it and it traveled almost all the way up and then let me watch out for the sun it also went up these two trees and went up into here and burnt up a lot of that tree as well on this structure from the heat it started to melt the shingles on this building but it didn't actually damage it kind of blistered up some of the paint on the side but really just some of the shingles and stuff were were melted and burnt so that morning when the fire happened it, it was crazy so we had we had been like in the 70s a few days prior to and then that particular night we had this huge cold wave come and the lows that night were going to be below freezing it was in like the upper 20s there was a potential for some sleet and or snow and the winds were brutal they were like 30 40 mile an hour sustained winds with gusts up to 50 or 60. 
and I came out that morning and it was super cold, but I did have the heat lamps on as we had done. I'd actually did a few days without it and I turned them back on because of those cold temperatures. And I came out to do morning feed like normal. Everything was perfectly fine. Went about my business like normal. I went inside the house and about 40 or so minutes after being inside the house, uh, I'm actually changing my son's diaper in the middle of that and somebody is just beating on the door. I mean, it reminded me of like when I'm a police officer about to do a search warrant on a house beating on the door. I mean, they were beating on the door. And so I hurry up, get him done. Uh, they beat so hard it actually woke my wife up. And so I go to the front door, nobody's there. And then about that time I hear beating on the back door. And when I turned to go around back to see what was going on, it took me to the direction of this pen and I just see this huge thing of fire out here. As I see it, I take off running and I'm grabbing the hoses that I have at the front of the house. And as I'm doing it, I see a lady who apparently was who was beating on my door. And she was telling me, I've already called 911. They're on the way. I never got the lady's name. I didn't know who she was. And I ran out here with the hose and I literally could only see a little bit of wood in the bottom because the fire was so big and so hot. I knew that my hose was not gonna put this fire out. It was so hot and so big. And so I just started spraying the wood chips on the ground around it to try to prevent it from spreading. Fortunately, uh, I'd say within a minute or two of all this going on, the fire department began to show up. Well, to access my property, you gotta come from two different directions. And they weren't gonna be able to get up here from the first way that they came. And so we had to redirect them around to the other direction. Well, in that meantime, I saw the fire starting to catch, trying to get to this building. And this building, although it's one of our smaller structures, I don't know how the people built it, but it is probably one of the heaviest ones. And I guess in the moment of adrenaline, I tried to pick up the front of it and started to drag it and I was getting it little by little. Uh, but by that time, the firemen had come around to the other side and one of them helped me finish pulling it. Um, and then from there, I let them do their thing. While my biggest concern then at that point was it had begun to sleet, um, it had begun to flurry and the winds were, were blowing really hard. And after about 10 minutes, I had noticed that the piglets were starting to shiver. Uh, because when the fire happened, somehow the mom and them were all the way away from the fire as far as they could near the front gate. And when I saw them like heavily shivering, I knew that they were getting too chilled. And so while they were putting out the fire, I hurry up, I grabbed them, and I grabbed an old water trough that we have, threw some hay in it, and I put a heat lamp up in our garage, and I told uh, Mrs. Rocky Creek and Madison to keep an eye on them to make sure they don't get out of the trough and I set the heat lamp up and that's where they stayed in the garage while we tried to address what was going on out here. Now while the fire was going and all the firemen were here Big Mama stayed away. Well the problem was was once everything was said and done and since it burned so hot the fire department sprayed some kind of a foam mixture over the the remnants of the fire or debris. And they said that was to keep it from reigniting and that it would break down throughout the day. Well, I don't know what's in that stuff, but Big Mama like loved it. She was trying to keep getting back into it. And so that was causing me a problem. So I had to start trying to figure out how am I going to get her away from all this. So fortunately, I had some extra panels. Um, they weren't hog panels, but they were cattle panels. And I knew that I had doubled the size width of this pen compared to Mater's. So I started thinking if I can just get her out of this area and I could run the panel across parallel to Mater's pen, I can isolate her to the front. And then once I get her isolated, I can work on cleanup and figure out a structure. So that's what we were able to do. A friend of mine named Colin, he came up here with some T-posts. We drove those in, got the panel up here. Once we did that and we got her separated, then we could slow down and get stuff done. So as you can see, we got T-post, 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 and I end up having to run this cattle panel, which is higher. And then to keep the piglets from going through, we just stuck some chicken wire on this side. Yep, we talking about you. And so that way they can't 
they couldn't get through that way. So then once we got her separated, you know, I kind of was able to calm down and I started thinking about a structure. That gray structure is too tight. Um, so I didn't think moving it in was going to be feasible because her trying to feed and not squish the babies and stuff was just going to be a little bit tough and it's on a platform and so I thought that might be a little bit hard for the piglets to get in. And so as I had time to process, I quickly thought about that shelter that we talked about earlier. And fortunately, they got pins about that long, but I was able to pop those with a digging bar. It's super light. We brought it up here and it has worked out just fine for right now. But the key to, to all of that and the chaos and what was going on um, was that a a whole lot of friends and family were willing to come right away pitch in and help out which was a tremendous blessing um, if anything it was almost overwhelming the number of phone calls and people reaching out while i'm trying to address it uh, but you know that that's a good problem to have what was initially very frustrating because we had worked so hard to create this and to see it all go away so fast was just it was a little bit to take in, but then on the back side, there were so many good things that came out of it. You know, once I had time to, to decompress that it was, it, it, we're quite blessed is what we are. Um, but the big thing is for me was when this was going on so, so chaotic was to compartmentalize and do one thing at a time. Number one priority was getting the piglets to be warm and to be safe. We got that done. Number two, okay, I now I need to get big mama separated before she gets herself hurt, either through the screws, nails, debris, whatever it may be, eating the foam, whatever's in that. And so once I got her separated, okay, now we're at a slowdown point where we can really try to figure this out and not make any irrational decisions. And once we got to that point, it was okay. So in the moment of chaos, instead of trying to essentially eat the whole pie at once, you gotta take it one slice at a time. And once we did that, things went a whole lot smoother. And no, this is not what I had planned for this whole setup and for all this to go the way that it did, but it could have been so much worse. The tree started catching on fire. My neighbor has a barn not too far, probably 25, 30 yards away. There's a ton of other foliage around here. I mean, it could have been so much worse. Thankfully, it was during the morning time when I was home. Thankfully, somebody saw it, and thankfully, no animals were lost. So, you know, it could have been so much worse. We're blessed and thankful that it worked out the way that it did. Um, but you know, it's just part of it. You know, we lessons learned and we'll, we'll go from there. So you may be wondering, you know, what, what caused the fire? And the only thing that I can think of is gonna be the heat lamp had to have in some form or fashion. I find it extremely hard to think and believe that the heat lamp fell be, because I had them on a hanger, I had them on a chain, I had them on a ratchet strap, and I had the cord wrapped around the hanger. So I find it extremely hard to believe that it had fallen down and it hadn't been an issue all the way up until that point. I can only think that it had to have been one of three issues. Number one is that I had read that the heat lamp bulbs can burst if moisture touches the hot bulb. And with the amount of high winds that we had and with the moisture in the air that day, I'm thinking maybe the bulb could have busted hot shards into that dry straw and it created the fire. The other thing is going to be is that maybe Big Mama potentially somehow got into it and got close enough and maybe her hair caught on fire and then she laid down and caught it on fire. You know, I really don't know. And then the last thing, which is very possible and what I think is probably the most likely of the culprits, is that I just bought a second heat lamp that morning because we had our meat birds needed some extra heat because it was going to be that cold. And so I had pulled the one lamp from them a few days prior. And I thought, well, it's gonna be really cold. I need to put a second heat lamp back in there. So I went to the store that day and I put that heat lamp in that night. And we had been a week with no issues. And I'm wondering if maybe the cord or something electrical with that particular heat lamp may have malfunctioned and created some kind of a fire, maybe through electrical failure or something to that effect. I have no way of proving it because the fire was so hot that there was literally nothing left of any of the heat lamps. Um, so we'll never really know. If anything, I'm just going to have to be prepared in the future and plan if I'm going to need supplemental heat that I'm probably not going to ever use a heat lamp again in an outdoor enclosure. All right, you little boogers be good. We're going to go take care of the chickies now.
So egg layers are doing perfect. And as you can see, we've had a huge change to our chicken coop area. There's a lot to talk about with that. I'm not gonna fit that into today's video. We'll bring you one here in the very near future that talks about how did we get this, what all have we done, and why did we get it, and why it's been so great for us now. So, but stay tuned for that, but the egg layers are doing good. But on a good note, you may not notice, but over there on the far side in the A-frame, the I am Samanis are no longer in there because the geese are in there and they're outside and they have gotten huge. So let's go check them out. So these little guys don't like to go up at night. So I have to force them in at night, but they're doing okay and they're getting big. Hi, little geese. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, good morning. You wanna show everybody how big you've gotten? Yeah, you're starting to feather out. Oh, you're getting puffy. So these guys are doing good. This one's really starting to gain a lot of feathers. This one is kind of starting to catch up a little bit. But thus far, based off their colorations and things, I do think we may be, we may stand a really good chance that these may very well be Toluth. But time will tell a little bit. If they're not a Toluth, and I'm guessing maybe a Pilgrim, but it's gonna take a little bit of time to find out. I see you guys. I'll be bringing y'all quite a bit more information about the geese in future videos, but like I told you, we just got so much that has happened here lately. I'd have to put out an hour long video to get y'all caught up. So we'll kind of break it down a little bit in the future, uh, but I'll share with you my experiences with them in a brooder, which was interesting, and kind of what I've noticed about them in comparison to chickens and my thoughts of them so far. But we also got another thing, because you may notice behind me there, we got meat birds on grass already. I didn't even share with you all other than post on Instagram when they arrived. Welcome home, little guys. That's a lot of fluffiness. And they're already on grass. That's how far behind we are on some videos. So, but we need to get those guys fed real quick. So I need to run up to the building, get their feed and get them done. Man, I tell y'all what, at one point I had three brooders going on in this building. I had two with chickens in it and one with the geese in it and lord it was funky up in here so i'm so glad to finally have them out of my building the only thing worse than having the building so smelly is that i used to brood all of my birds in the garage which i'll take my building smelly over the garage any day but we ran the electric poultry netting right here in this leaf area we'll talk about that in a future video as to why i changed that up this year but let's get these guys fed and show them, show you how quickly some of these guys have grown in only a couple weeks. I know y'all are hungry. Chill out. Go back in. No, go. Go. Goodness gracious, I know. Go. So right now I'm just putting their feed in these two pans because I need to get a large feeder for them again, which will be out here when I put them out. So we just moved these guys out here about two days ago and it's best to put them in the coop and leave them in just the coop for at least a few days. So they kind of learn that this is where my water is, this is where my safety area is. And then once they've kind of learned and established that, then I'll start opening the door and letting them out throughout the daytime. But I want them to know to go back in there at night because even though this only has chicken wire on it with the electric netting around, that chicken wire is only a secondary barrier from predators, but that chicken wire isn't gonna keep any predators out really. It just delays their ability to get to them. But these guys are growing really fast. They're only a couple weeks old, but I think they're gonna turn out to be a good batch of birds. And I'll also share with you why we have them in this leafed area versus on grass this year, because I want to try something out. So guys, that's a quick little rundown review on sort of what happened with the fire and kind of a lot of changes that have happened here on the homestead. But like I told you, stay tuned with us because I will go into quite a bit of details of how we came about with doing this new fancy coop that we got, because it's going to be a game changer for us. I'm it's probably my favorite thing I've done this year and it's worked out perfectly. What was a real bad issue with the pig, I ended up with a very blessed issue with the chicken coop, literally very quickly thereafter. I'm also gonna be coming to you here very soon because I've been getting in the past month a ton of questions from people specifically about the Cooney Coonies. 
a lot of people seem like they're really starting to raise them. So I'm gonna give you some detailed information about how we raise our Cooney Coonies, how we feed them, things to prepare for, why I think they're better than other pigs for small scale family homesteading. So I'll be coming to you with a lot of information on that. And then obviously we're in meat bird production time. So for those of you all that wanna learn about raising your own birds for meat, which I highly encourage you to do so, we'll take you along that process as well and share with you what works for us and some tips and tricks that I have found that you can raise meat birds to where their health is good, they act like normal chickens, and you can reduce the amount of loss that you have in doing so. So guys, there's been a ton that's gone on. I know we've been gone for a few weeks, but at the end of the day, I need to take care of my property, I need to take care of my family, and I need to take care of my life before I focus on putting out YouTube content. So I appreciate your all's understanding. I kind of reached a point where we were getting behind here because I didn't even get talking about the garden, but way down there, I got a little bit going with that now. We started seeds the other day, but I gotta take care of stuff that needs to be done on my home front before I worry about putting out videos. So over those couple weeks, I really was just hammered down, busting out stuff to get us back to a caught up point to where then I can start sharing content with you all. And we're finally there. So I look forward to being back with you all and we can start getting into all this stuff into more details again and meet more regularly. So I do appreciate your understanding. And until then guys, y'all start getting some seeds in the ground, start raising your animals. Let's start having a wonderful spring and summer and hopefully you'll have a bountiful harvest and that you'll also start to, to slowly raise your own food if you haven't started yet. So we all got busy lives. We all got stuff that happens. It's never gonna be perfect, but doing something is better than nothing. So until then, guys, y'all keep your heads up. I appreciate each and every one of you. Y'all be good, and we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Bye, guys.